Hello, good morning and welcome to Mosborough Elim Church. I want to give you a warm welcome this morning to everybody in the building. It's lovely to see you, to everybody online. Thank you for joining us. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy, happy Father's Day to the men of the church. We're going to celebrate you today and we're grateful for you. We're grateful for the wisdom and the love that you show us and we're going to honour that today. Who heard the thunder last night? Me. Who slept through it? Me. There are quite a few of us, quite a few of us. Vicky's going around telling people like it's a bad thing. I'm quite proud. I'm quite proud I slept right through it. <laughs> I slept really well. <laughs> but we're here to praise God. Amen. We're here to honour not just the men of the church, but to honour our God, our Father. It says in Romans 8, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. He's our Father. He's a good, good Father. And we're going to praise him and we're going to worship him this morning. If you are able to stand, and stand, join me in standing. We're going to just spend just a moment quieting in our hearts, quieting in our, our spirit. We thank you, Father God, that we can cry out, Abba, Father. That, yes, Lord, we're here to celebrate the men of the church, and we thank you, Lord, for them. But we thank you that you are the great example. We thank you that you are the good, good Father. We thank you that you are the good, loving, gracious Father. And we are children of God. And we can come this morning and we're going to celebrate you, Lord Jesus. We're going to celebrate you, Father God. And Lord, as we worship this morning. We're worshipping you, our Father. And as we do that, Lord, as a good Father, you gave us a great gift, the Holy Spirit. Would you move amongst us this morning? Refresh us, renew us. Stir our hearts for you, Lord. Talk to us, heal us, help us. As we worship you, our Father God. What a privilege to be called children of God. What a privilege to call you good, good Father. And we praise you. And we worship you. And we honour you, Lord Jesus. And we give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. It's worshipping. It's praising this morning. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love. Searching for answers, for and 
Let's give our God praise this morning. Let's give him worship this morning. You are loved by him. You are loved by him. The good, good father. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. If it's in the quietness of your own heart or if it's out loud, just give him praise this morning. give you praise, Lord Jesus. We worship you. Our good Father, you are good. You are good. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you love us, Father God. And you are a good father and that's who you are. And we are loved by you and that's who we are. And we thank you, Jesus, for that. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you worship. And we give you honour this morning for it, Lord. And we give you praise. Great are you, Lord. Our Father everlasting.
I was lost, but He brought me in. Oh, His love for me. Oh, His love for me. Who oh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child. His grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, He died for me Who oh, the sun sets free Who oh, is free indeed I'm a child forsaken, we're not forgotten, we're not abandoned. He loves us. 
the good, good Father. 1 John 3, 1 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Let me say that again. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him worship. Let's give him thanks this morning. Worship. into your family Lord we're accepted into your family we are embraced into your family Lord through the love you have lavished on us by how we praise you and we worship you and we give you honour and praise this morning Lord we thank you you are the good father we thank you that we are children of you. This isn't just one day to celebrate that moment, but we celebrate it every day. Father God, I wonder how I ever existed without the knowledge of you and your parenthood and your loving care. But now I'm adopted in your family. I'll never be alone. God, you're there beside me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
we'll sing your praises. We'll sing your praises forevermore. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Give you praise and honor, Lord Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Lord Father God, today we ask you to bless our earthly fathers. Lord, would you bless them for all the times they've reflected love and strength and generosity, wisdom and mercy. Lord, we thank you for those that have followed your example on how to be a loving and a good father. We honour our fathers, Lord Jesus. We honour the men of the church. Those men who have been our spiritual fathers. We thank you for all that they have taught us. For all the times they have challenged us in our lives and journey with you. We thank you for all the dads, the spiritual dads, that have modelled the qualities that help us to be responsible, principled and God-fearing people. But Lord Jesus, we're also aware that not all our fathers have lived up to these ideals. Would you give them the grace to acknowledge and learn from their mistakes? And Lord, would you give us the grace to extend to them the same forgiveness that you offer us all? I pray for those children today that have been let down by a father. Would you be their grace and their help and strength in a day that can be very painful? We ask your blessing on those men who have served as father figures in our lives, be it in the church or out of the church. Those men who have stepped up when our dads have let us down. We thank you for the love that they have shown us, that have the, the love that has helped them to know. Would you help them to know that they have been a good influence on us and has changed us for the better? Would you give new and future fathers the guidance they need, Lord Jesus, to raise happy children, grounded in a love for God and other people? We pray for those, Lord, that, whose fathers have passed away, be it recently or many years ago. Lord Jesus, we remember them today. And Lord, would you help them to remember those good times? To remember all that they have taught us, and even though it is still painful that they are no longer with us, we thank you for the good memories and the time we did have with them. And God, we thank you for the example that you are. We thank you for being the perfect father, the father that loves, cares, helps, and shows mercy to us all. Help the father, spiritual fathers, and the men in this church to walk in those ways. Thank you again, Lord Jesus, for every father that is here today. For every man that is here today. We honour them. We give you thanks for them. And we pray that your blessings will be upon them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you that the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Let's continue to worship him. Worship you, Jesus. God is stronger, God you are higher 
than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God.
Give him a round of applause. Do we believe that this morning? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is more powerful. Our God is healer. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We pray these things over our lives, Lord, this morning. Whatever situation we find ourselves, whatever we're crying out to the good, good Father this morning, we pray that you will be greater, you will be stronger, you will be higher than any other thing that is upon our lives, that you will be healer in the name of Jesus. We pray it over our lives. We pray it over each other, Father God. We pray it over this church and this community in the name of Jesus. Because you are greater. You are stronger. You are higher than anything man says. Because you are good, good Father. Hallelujah. 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 You are great. You are wonderful. We're going to sing how deep the Father's love is for us. We just absorb that love this morning. Hallelujah. We take that love, Father God, and thank you. That God is greater, stronger, and mightier. Still loves us. I know with all my heart His 
spend a moment just a short moment just reflecting on the wonderful love that God has for us how deep the Father's love is for us and he proved it by his wounds being our ransom How we love you, Jesus. Sometimes we struggle to accept the love that's given. Sometimes we don't feel we're worthy. But God wants to, you to know this morning, he loves you. You're a child of God and you are worthy of his love. That God that is greater, stronger, mightier, more powerful, knows every hair upon your head. And he is full of your love. Full of his love for you. Hallelujah. We thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. And we give you glory and praise and honour and worship this morning in your precious name Amen Amen please take your seats Hallelujah God is good Amen we sorry for a few gremlins in the projector we've, we've got a new projector it's turned up it's going to be put up this week and mine and Osman's theory is that this projector's not happy about it and it's, it's going out in glory. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going out like he means it. But God is good. Video news. Hello, good morning and welcome to Mosborough Elim Church. This is video news and this is everything to do with the life of the church. This Tuesday at 6.30 via Zoom we have our prayer meeting. Always a good time as we share testimonies, as we lay requests before God and we just spend time in his presence. I want to encourage you to join us if you can. If you can't, please still pray. Pray from your homes. And if you have any prayer requests, please let myself or Titus know and we will pray for you. If you're online, please go to our contact page via the website and let us know. It would be our privilege to pray for you. So that's prayer meeting at 6.30 on Tuesday. Thank you. So next Sunday, Sunday the 25th, we are going to spend time in a family celebration. We're going to have our service half an hour earlier, so we will be starting at 10.30 for about an hour or so, and we're going to have our service, and then after it, we're going to have some food and celebration as we celebrate Leon's 18th birthday. Please make every effort to join us. If you are able to as well, there is a food sign-up sheet at the back. Um, please do sign up and bring some food on the day. And let's celebrate with Pat and Leon and family as he celebrates his 18th birthday. So next Sunday, starting at 10 30. And then on the 2nd of July, can I remind you, we have our AGM meeting. We will be starting at 11 o'clock. We will have a Vision Sunday service and then we'll have a 15 minute break and then have our AGM. Just a reminder, AGM won't be online. The Vision Sunday will, but the AGM won't be. So that's 2nd of July. And then 16th of July, we've got a dedication coming up for Elsie May. I'm really looking forward to that. And um, I'll speak to you more about that a bit closer to the time. It's got, got some great few weeks coming up. I'm really looking forward to it. Please, if you can, do join up and do sign up for the food. Thank you.
And as I always say, don't forget our website. It has all the information, all the contacts and everything that you need. Otherwise, let's keep expanding, equipping and evolving. God bless you. Amen. Just to say with the AGM, at the back there now, you, we have two lots of reports. So we have the pastor report where I'm just making a bit of a comment on all the things that we've done over the year, giving some thanks to people. Um, please do take that to do have a read and next to it as well is the financial report thank you to Titus who's put that together um, oh Vicky's showing them off there at the back now so please do take a financial report as well can I encourage you sort of one per family just so we can save on paper. Uh, saves me having to print any more out, basically. So if there's one per family, that would be fantastic. But please do take that. You've been given now a couple of weeks for you to read that. If you have any questions that you want either to ask myself or Titus or for church session, um, you have now a couple of weeks opportunity. You, there's two ways of doing that. Um, you might have a question. You go, I just don't really understand that. Can you explain it? Or you might want to have a question that you want to actually be asked at the AGM because you feel everybody needs to hear it. So just make that clear. Uh, you can either email myself. Uh, you can find those contacts on the website or get in touch with me or speak to me or Titus, or for church session. And um, you will be allowed to ask questions on the day, but as I've always said, I then have the right and not say I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> so if you want to get a question in before, that's your opportunity. Okay. So looking forward to it, looking forward to sharing some things that's happening in the church. Exciting things are happening in church, and there's going to be plenty of opportunities for you to get involved in different things as well. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a good, good Father. I pray, Lord, now as we hear your word, and it be it only for a moment, will you speak to us? Would you challenge into our hearts, not just the fathers, but each and every one of us, Lord, that we will hear your word, that we will hear your voice, that you will speak through me, Lord, we pray. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Those young ones who usually would go into this class, so Joy, Grace, Ruby, can you go to the back where Vicky is? Um, yes. Thank you, Archie. Um, and um, you're going to help put something together that's just going to bless the men of the church at the end. So as I was thinking and I was praying about this morning, about what to speak on, because obviously when you get to things like Father's Day, it's preach on that he's a good father, he's a loving father. And you kind of do that each week. We've just celebrated six years of being here yesterday, which was wonderful. Thank you. So great, so exciting that we've done. How, how quick has that gone, by the way? How quick has that gone? And we were here, I remember us being here on one of the hottest days this earth has ever known. It was boiling, wasn't it? And it was brilliant. It was packed and it was great. And, um, you know, so I've, this is sort of my seventh time I'm preaching on Father's Day. So I was thinking, what do I preach on? And I thought to myself, well, where are you <laughs> as a father? Where am I as a father? As you know, Daisy at the back there, the little camera girl at the back there, she's uh, my daughter. And I was thinking, well, where are we as, as a father and a daughter? And we're at the stage of our lives where in about just over a year's time, Daisy's going to be leaving us. I know, I know, all being well. She'll have done well in her A-levels and all being well. She'll have gone to university or Bible college as she's looking to. She's got an interview in a couple of weeks, pray for her. And um, we've got to this point where she's going to leave us. I don't think I'm emotionally or mentally ready for it, I'll be honest with you. I've known her all her life. 
<laughs> you know, I've been there from day one, and, and I think I'm, I don't tell her this often, but I think I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss her. Just don't tell her that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to miss her because who's going to do the dishwasher? And you. <laughs> we, yeah, we are going to miss her. But who's going to do the dishwasher? Who's going to walk the dog? Who am I going to annoy in evenings? When I get bored, Vicky. <laughs> Thank you, Max. I'll take that suggestion on. <laughs> Who am I going to annoy? But oh, seriously, I'm going to miss her. And so it got me thinking, in the Bible, now bear with me here, in, there's a bit in the Bible where Jesus shares a parable, and it's the lost son. Can I just say straight away, I'm not comparing Daisy to the lost son. Even though she does seem to cost me a lot of money a lot of the time, but I'm not comparing her to the lost son. But this moment in the Bible where there is a father who sees his son go, and that son goes and he starts to live life, and the father is left behind. And as I have no doubt Daisy will do often, he comes back. And it's what the reaction of this father does when the son comes back that I want us to concentrate on this morning. You see, the whole parable is based on Jesus responding to a situation. We have to sometimes remember that when we read a parable. It's very quick for us to sort of react to what we read, but often you need to go back to find out actually what Jesus is answering. What was the question in the first place? And he tells us that in Luke 15, verse 1, that Jesus is with tax collectors and with sinners. He, Jesus is doing what he often does. He's eating with these people, he's talking with them, he's teaching them, he's doing all of these things. And of course, in verse 2, the Pharisees and the teachers of the laws start to moan about it. They start to get annoyed. They start to grumble amongst themselves that Jesus is with these tax collectors and with these sinners. And Jesus knows this. So he shares three parables to get the point over to them. And quite simply, Jesus is saying that he is here for the lost. So the three parables of the lost coin, um, the lost sheep, and then the lost son. And Jesus is talking about those people who are lost and who need saving. For those who are away from God. And all three of them are outlining a slight difference on how we can all get lost. But what I find really interesting in this parable, and coming from a father's point, and coming from a moment that I know Daisy will leave at some point, but I like in much better circumstances... It's the father's reaction and it's the father's response to what is happening in this parallel, in this parable, is what I want us to look at. And the parallel is very simple. We are the son of God. No, we're not. We are the son. We're not the son of God. We are the son and the father is God. So when we look at the father's response and we look at the Father's reaction, we're looking at God's reaction and response to us. And that is very important for us to remember as we look into this. So let's read it together. If you've got your Bibles, um, it's in Luke chapter 15 and starting at verse 11. And he says this. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distance, distance country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. 
He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Amen. I'm going to end that there. We could carry on reading, but for time purposes, I'm not going to. So at the start of this parable, we have this very sort of cold moment, don't we, where the son basically says to his father, I can't wait for you to die. I want your money now. To me, and I'm sure you'll agree, that seems quite cold and that seems quite harsh. I think I'd be offended if Daisy did that to me. (laughs) I think I'd be offended, wouldn't we? It seems like a, a moment that seems unnecessary and actually it was unnecessary because back in the day the law was that the father was not free to do his own will as we would do today because he had two sons the law was two thirds for the eldest son and a third for the youngest son and you didn't have to wait for him to die for it to happen he could retire give the money out And they would look after him as part of that inheritance. So he never had to be like this. The son never had to do it like this or this way. So it was a real cold and a real harsh moment. But how does the father respond? Well, he does what has been asked. You see, God will always give us the freedom to make the choices. I'm sure the father in this story sat the boy down and said to him, are you sure? Is this what you want to do? As a father, I would have sat Daisy down if this was me and her. And I would have said, look, these are your options. This is what you need to consider. This is what you need to think about. And in fact, me and Daisy, we often have those sorts of conversations. But as a good father, she then has the opportunity, after hearing everything, to weigh up her options and make her own decisions. Because we have to let them do that, don't we? And that's what God does for us. God will challenge you. God will give you choices. God will talk into sins, but it's your choice to stop it or not. It's your choice to walk in it or not. It's your choice if to take the guidance for the living that he's given you. Because a good father will always give freedom for the child to make a choice. Can I say at this point, young people, young adults amongst us, always look to the wisdom of the old. Can I say that? Always look to the wisdom of the old. You will save yourself years of pain and years of hurt. You really, really will. Because we've lived it. It says in the Bible that grey hairs is wisdom. Amen. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) You know, it's wisdom. And it's wisdom because we've lived it. It's wisdom because we've done it. I can guarantee some of the things you may be going through, there will be one person in this church that's gone through something similar. You are privileged, young people, because you have such wonderful wisdom around you. And do you know what? They care for you as well. Go to them. Ask them advice. 
Don't be afraid to do it. And us older generation, never be afraid to give it. <laughs> they may accept it, they may not. But it's our responsibility to nurture them, to walk with them, and to help them. At the tender young age of 43, I still look to those that are older than me for advice and for wisdom. You can't beat it. And my encouragement to you is to listen to them because they're willing to give it. But let's remember, as I was saying, because that's a bit of a side point, God will always give us the freedom to make the choices. Are we following his voice? Are we following his guidance? Are we following his word? So if a son strays away, he lives his life, and it all goes wrong very quickly. He loses all of his money and ends up wanting to eat the food that the pigs are eating. Ah, that's not nice. You've reached low, haven't you? You have reached the lowest you can go. And he has this brainwave. He has this moment where he goes, I know, I will go back to my father. It actually tells us in verse 17 that it actually says, when he came back to his senses. When he came back to his senses. Let's not forget, this is about people who have lost God. And God says, when you come back to your senses and come back to me. <laughs> when you've come back to your senses and you come back to me. When you've come back to your senses and stop trying to do those things on your own. And you've come back to me. This son realises that his father's servants are doing better than he is. They eat better, they have a roof over their head. And he thinks, surely it would be better to go back and be a servant for my father. So he travels back, and there's this wonderful verse, verse 20. And he tells us this, so he got up, this is the son, and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, he threw his arms around him and kissed him. That line, while he was a long way off, his father saw him. This was a father that was full of hope and expectation. Because I don't know about you, but for me... A long way off is like coming out of here and looking down at the bottom of the street. And that's a long way. I played snooker the other day. I could barely see the other end of the table. And now, right, Brian, <laughs> you know, I missed a few balls. Could barely see the other end of the table, let alone that far down. And if I'm not expecting to see someone, let's say my mum and dad were down there and I weren't expecting to see them, even them being my mum and dad, I would have noticed them. It wouldn't click in my mind. But if I've got a hope and expectation that mum and dad's coming to visit us on a Sunday, and I've gone out there and looked down, and I see them walking towards me, I'd know it's them. Because I'm expecting to see them. So when this father sees them from a long way off, he has a hope, and he has this expectation that the son's going to come back to the father. That whatever situation he's in, he's coming back to his father. This father had hope in his heart. You know, we often talk about how God, um, sorry, how we have hope in God. But God has hope in us. He has hope in us that we made those right choices. That we will come to him. And then I love this image. That as he comes to the father, the father runs to him. The father runs to him. And what does he do? He throws his arms around him. Throws himself at him. He embraces him. He holds him tight. And he kisses him. There is times when me and Daisy have been away from each other. Sometimes she goes to see grandparents. Or I, back in the day I was doing youth camps and stuff like that. And when I come back... Daisy's now a hugger, as many of you know. So after the service, we'll go and hug her, just for the fun of it. But she's not a hugger. And, but when I come back and we've been away, we grab each other. We hold each other tight. 
She hates it, but I do it. <laughs> because I've missed her. And I want to be with her. And I embrace her and I hold her tight. And this is what Father God is doing to us. He is running towards us. He's embracing us. He's holding us tight. He kisses us. And for some of us here, maybe we've been away from God. And it's time to head back towards him. For some of us here, maybe it's time to follow a calling. That God's been talking into your life about something. Maybe for some of us here, it's just to step up into whatever we need to be walking into, or those decisions. And as we do that, we're turning back towards God. And he sees us, he runs to us, he throws his arms around us, and kisses us. And then secondly, the Father's reaction is told to us by the same line in verse 20. So he got up, went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. Filled with compassion for him. The father is seeing him from a distance away. This is a man who has squandered everything. He's lost everything. He's eating or trying to eat the pig's food. He's not looking like the son that left. But instantly, this father recognises him. Instantly, this father sees this son, who will not look like the son that left, and straight away is full of compassion for him. He doesn't know his story, he doesn't know what he's been up to, but all he has is compassion. Compassion means to have pity or concern for another person, or as another version puts it, to recognise the suffering of someone and then take action to help. To recognise the suffering of someone and then take action to help. You see, you can't have compassion without action. If someone comes in here and says they are hungry, and we go, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that, that's a shame. That's not compassion, that's just empathy. That's just relating to it. Compassion is seeing that person saying, I'm sorry to hear that. Here's a food bag or here's some money to get some food or here's the number for food bank or whatever it may be. Compassion has to come with an action. The father has compassion. He already knew he was going to accept the son back. He was going to rejoice and party. He was going to help the son, whatever condition that son was in. God has compassion on us. Wherever we find ourselves today, whatever we've been struggling with, however we've been walking with God, whatever we are going through, God has compassion on you. Psalms 103.13, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Psalms 116.5, the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Whatever you are needing today, walk back to the Father. He's looking out for you. He's ready to spot you. He's ready to run towards you. He's ready to embrace you. He's ready to hold you and kiss you. And he's ready to do it with a heart full of compassion and help towards you. And then the son comes back with his planned apology. We hear it earlier in the chapter. I know what I'm going to say to my dad. I know how I'm going to say it. And in verse 21, we see the father's response directly to the son. He speaks over his planned apology. He doesn't get a chance to say everything that he wants to. Instead, he says, bring the best robe. Put sandals on his feet. Kill the fattened calf. That's like eating the turkey, Christmas turkey in October. You just don't do it. That's what he did. You just don't do it. You don't just break it out for any reason. And this is what the father did. Why? Because 24, verse 24 explains it. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. He's forgiven. He went and did what he did. He came to his senses. And he went back to his father and his father forgave him. 
the Father forgave him and the Father forgives us. Did you notice that not once in that parable does the Father go, so what happened? He doesn't go, tell me the story. He doesn't say, look at the state of you, what has happened to you. He doesn't say, why has it took you so long to come back? He doesn't even ask where the money is. He does none of that. He just forgives him. Why? Because that's what Father God does with us. He's forgotten our sins quicker than we forget our... Forget, forget. He forgets our sins quicker than we do. That's the truth of it. He forgives us. 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just will forgive us from our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He's a forgiving God, a God that will forgive wherever you are coming from. He forgives you. The parable is called the lost son, but actually it could have easily been called the loving father. Because this father, without love in his heart, he would not have been able to have had the hope and the expectation that his son was going to come back. Without love in his heart, he would not have been able to respond and react like he did. Without love in his heart, he would not have been able to have the compassion for his son. Without love in his heart, it would not have caused him to run towards his son. It would not have caused him to embrace him. It would not have caused him to kiss him. It would not have caused him to put robes and sandal on his feet and kill the fattened calf. And without love in his heart, he would not have been able to forgive the son. Let's remember what I said at the beginning. This is a parallel of what the father is for us. And he is full of love in his heart for you and for me. And so much love for you and for me that whatever's been going on, he's full of compassion. He's full of expectation. He's full of hope for you. He's full of forgiveness for each and every one of us. And he runs to us as he sees us coming from a long way. And he throws his arms around us and he kisses us. Amen. Let's close our eyes just for a moment. Wherever we are, whatever we've done, whatever we need to do, let's go back to the Father and experience our love today. And my prayer for you is as we sing the next song in a moment, it's called Run to the Father. And I pray that that will be a declaration for you to say I'm running to the Father in this situation. I'm running into the Father in this moment. I'm running to the Father with this fear. I'm running to the Father because I need his forgiveness. I'm running to the Father because I've been taking another path when I should have been taking the other one. I'm running to the Father because I want to experience his love, his, his compassion, his forgiveness. Because he's a good, good Father. That's who he is. And we are loved by him. And that's who we are. Father calls you today. You may have been a Christian for 10 minutes. You may have been a Christian for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But he calls you again today. And he says, fill my embrace. Let me hold you today. Don't try this on your own. I'm here with you. Hallelujah. So let's stand. Let's sing, run to the Father. And let's declare it this morning. And we run to him this morning. So let's stand. Let's respond.
we run to the Father again and again and again. And I thank you, Lord, as we do that, you see us from a long way off. And with half full of compassion, a half full of forgiveness, a half full of hope and expectation, and a half full of love, you run to us, you embrace us, you kiss us, you keep us safe and secure, and we thank you, Jesus. And we walk in our knowledge this week, Lord God, and we give you praise and honour, and we say thank you that you are the Father, you are the good Father, you are the good God and good King, and we thank you once again for each man in this church, each man watching this online. We honour them and thank you, Lord, for them. Help us to follow your examples, Lord Jesus. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please, there is tea, refreshments, biscuits, what have you, behind. Um, Please do stay for that. Please don't forget to take a report and also sign up for the food sheet to my, uh, next week. God bless.